Hello and good evening friends. Today is the fourth talk of the resident series of the ACNS webinars for the month of August. And we are fortunate to have with us today the chairman of the Department of Neurosurgery, Osaka University Graduate School of Medicine, Professor Takio Goto. Professor Goto is an excellent neurosurgeon and a very avid researcher with several articles to his credits in both English and Japanese languages. He is a wonderful teacher and a supporter for the education initiatives of the ACNS. We are so thankful to Professor Goto for the educational support he offers for the ACNS. To chair this session at a very short notice, we are so thankful to Professor Azmi Elias from the prestigious Tunku Abdul Rahman University of Neuroscience, Malaysia. Professor Azmi Elias is the current executive editor of the Asian Journal of Neurological Sciences. He was also the previous secretary of the ACNS. Professor Azmi Elias, thank you for accepting our invitation to chair this session. As always, Professor Liu Gun Seng from Malaysia is my co-host for today. On behalf of the Education Committee of the ACNS and the President, Professor Yoko Kato, I welcome the speaker, Professor Takyu Kato, and the Chair, Professor Azmi Elias, to, to this online platform of the ACNS webinars. Now, may I please request Professor Goto to start his webinar talk. Okay, the, good evening, the, uh, everyone. Uh, I feel very honored to be here and I have a have an opportunity to present my work, especially in the skull base surgery. My lecture is a surgical approach to skull base tumors. Uh, in the case of the skull base surgery, Osaka City University has always followed the basic principle uh, to treat the skull base tumor. This is a very simple illustration how to uh, decide the surgical approach to skull base tumor. Uh, can you see the slide? Okay. Yes, we can see. Uh, the tumor arrives somewhere in the skull base, and after growing up inside, the tumor compresses the uh, uh, cranial nerves, vessel, and brain stem, and it causes a symptom. At that time, we have to operate the tumor. But our rule is very simple. Not access the lateral margin of the tumor. And then not pull the tumor outward. If we pull the tumor outward, the tension of the cranial nerve and vessel increase. It might cause a, a bad complication to the patient. So. Our principal uh, strategy is like this. At first, we carefully evaluate the tumors and detect the origin of the tumor, and then access to the origin of the tumor at first, and then perform the internal decompression. After that, we carefully pull back the tumor to the center of the origin. After decompression of the tumor, uh, tension of the cranial nerve and the vessel relief, and we can dissect the dissectable plane between the tumor and the neural structure. After that, we observe the tumor from the contralateral side and pull the tumor to the center. I repeated the same procedure on both sides. And finally, we can reject the tumor. This is a basic but very effective rule to remove the skull base tumor. So our skull base approach should be selected to accomplish these two steps. First, access and origin of the tumor, and then pull it back to the center of the tumor is very important and basic rule. I will show, show a lot of case uh, to remove the tumor. Uh, this 36 year old female referred to us with a very severe gait disturbance and dysphagia. Uh, MRI shows a very large petrochrival meningioma compressing the uh, brain stem. Uh, we carefully evaluate the origin of the tumor. Uh, the attachment is here. So in such case, I use the 
uh, combined petrosal approach. But uh, many doctors consider combined petrosal approach uh, is a very complicated and time consuming strategy. So uh, we modify and simplify the approach and name mini combined transpetrosal approach. I will show the, our technique. At first, I found out how to expose the sigmoid sinus very simply. Uh, uh, during our surgical experience, we found out the, uh, the wall of sigmoid sinus just here around the mastoid emissary vein. So if we carefully drill out the bony structure around the emissary vein, as a part, we can dissect the wall of the sinus under the macroscopic version. After exposed the sigmoid sinus, we started the petrosectomy, but uh, drill out the petrous bone in the narrow surgical field is not good. So at first, I dissect the dura mater around the uh, middle fossa and also pre sigmoid dura and widely expose the petrous bone. And then I just drill out the bony structure along the petrous ridge. This procedure is a, a same technique of the uh, drilling of the sphenoidal ridge in case of the uh, terional approach. So I just drill out along the petrous ridge. And then after that, uh, I usually open the Meckel case at the initial stage of the surgery and mobilize the trigeminal nerve to enlarge the surgical corridor. And then I drill out the uh, petrous apex uh, through the subdural space to identify the sixth nerve. I will show our surgical video. Uh, this is a uh, very large petrochival meningioma. So I choose light mini combined transpetrosal approach. Our skin incision is uh, like this. And uh, cut the skin. And harvest the temporal fascia with the pedicle of the sternocleid muscle like this. This prop is very effective to seal the dural defect. And then I just temporal craniotomy and harvest the outer plate of the mastoid bone. And then our resident exposed the sigmoid sinus macroscopic fashion like this. Then we move, we move to the microscopic procedure. At first, I coagulate the middle meningeal artery and expose the GSPN around the middle fossa and expose the uh, petrous ridge. And then this is a sigmoid sinus. I carefully dissect the wall of sigmoid sinus. Uh, and this is a uh, endolipatic sac. I coagulate and cut the endolipatic sac to additionally dissect the dura mater to the deepest side. This is a petrous bone. Uh, now petrous bone was uh, widely exposed. And then start the petrous drilling. I drill out and open the mastoid antrum to identify the lateral semicircular canal. And then drill out and detect the posterior semicircular canal. Then detect superior semicircular canal. And I stimulate the facial nerve and localize the location of the genu of the facial nerve. And then I just draw it out along the petrous ridge. First bone work finish. And then I move to the subdural space. This is a petrosal vein and I ligate the SPS, most anterior side. This is a trigeminal nerve, and this is a Meckel case. In all case, 
at, at first I opened the Meckel case and uh, start to remove the tumor in the Meckel case. Uh, at that time, already tumor devascularized and detached. So we can mobilize the tumor very uh, bloodless surgical field. This is a horse now, and this is a branch of the SCA. I carefully dissect the uh, distal branch of the SCA and follow to the proximal site. This is a border of the tumor and the brain stem. Using this approach, we can directly observe the border. And then this is a vagina artery, and it's the perforator from the vagina artery. And then I additionally drill out the petrous apex in the subdural space. So surgical field was very large and we can identify six now. And then I dissected out the final piece of the tumor of the vagina artery. And then all tumor was successfully dissected out. Uh, Postoperatively, the most part of the tumor was resected out. And in addition, we can preserve the, her neurological function. Of course, patient feels uh, some uh, numbness on the uh, right hemiphase, but uh, eye movement, facial <laughs> function, and body also preserved. <laughs> and again, <laughs> the tumors also disappear. Are you and this is another case of the uh, large petrochrival meningioma. This tumor all also compress the brain stem severely. But uh, attachment is here, so combined petrosal approach also very effective. Uh, our mini combined transpetros ap approach shows the uh, uh, same procedure. At first, I dissect the dura mater and expose the petrous uh, bone very widely. This is a sigmoid sinus, and this is a pre-sigmoid uh, dura mater. And this is an endolympatic sac. Uh, at first, I carefully dissect the dura mater of the petrous bone. I cut and uh, coagulate the uh, endolympatic sac to expose the petrous bone widely. And this is a, a petrous ridge. Uh, now I widely expose the petrous bone and then start the bone work. At first I open the mastoid antrum and detect the lateral semicircular canal. And then I just the, uh, draw it out along the petrous ridge. So bone work was very small. So surgical time of the bone work very quick. I stimulate the uh, facial nerve and uh, mark the location of the genu of the facial nerve. And uh, I do it out along the petrous ridge to expose the SPF. And now I finish the bone work. So usually surgical time of the uh, petrosectomy is uh, 30 minutes or 40 minutes, very quick and short. And then I move to the subdural space. Always at first I open the Meckel case uh, and devascularize the tumor. This is uh, the trigeminal nerve and this is a false nerve. Tumor already uh, Devascularize, and we can uh, perform the internal decompression, very bloodless field. And this is the icon, and this is a brainstem. Uh, at first, the tumor severely adhere to the brainstem, but using this approach, we can carefully dissect the tumor of the brainstem and the vagina artery. 
And this is a six now. Uh, using this approach, I carefully detect the six now and the basilar artery and remove the tumor very carefully. Uh, now I start to remove the tumor around the posterior cavernous sinus. This is a fifth and fourth nerve. I remove the tumor in the cavernous sinus from posterior to anterior and dissect and preserve the old cranial nerves. And this is a pecon and remove all tumor. After operation, the almost all tumor was rejected out and her symptom dramatically improved. Uh, we can preserve her eye movement, facial function, and also preserve the hearing. This is a, another case of the uh, petrol uh, cryal meningioma, but attachment is a very low and uh, uh, attachment is near midline. How to operate the, this case? Uh, I carefully uh, evaluate the attachment. Attachment is just the midline. In such case, uh, endoscopic transcribal approach is a very effective procedure to remove this tumor. So in such situation, I select the endoscopic transcribal approach, not the transpetrosal approach. I uh, carefully uh, drill out the cryvus and coagulate the dramata. So this is the attachment. So when we cut the dramata, uh, attachment is already devascularized and detached. And fortunately, in this case, the tumor was very soft. So uh, we can uh, carefully dissect the tumor around the critical neural structure. This is a VA. And this is a six nerve. And this is the ICA. Uh, I carefully dissect the tumor downward. So all uh, tension to all uh, critical structure was relieved. So uh, we can find out the dissectable border. This is a tumor just uh, around the pond medullary junction, but I carefully dissect. This is a facial now, and I carefully remove it out. And now I dissected out all tumors and removed out, and all critical structure preserved. Uh, Postoperatively, the old tumor was uh, rejected out and her symptom improved. This is a, a, another case. Uh, this 30 year, uh, eight year old female referred to us with a uh, facial numbness and light hemiparesis. And uh, uh, MRI shows a very large petrol cavernous meningioma. How to remove the, this tumor? Uh, at a glance, it's very difficult to preserve the cranial nerve. But in such situation, I always put attention to this low intensity band. This low intensity band correspond to the anterior petrol crinoid ligament and posterior crinoid ligament. Anterior crinoid ligament connect to the anterior crinoid process and petrous apex. And posterior petrol crinoid ligament connect to the posterior posterior crinoid process and the petrous apex. Uh, this ligamentous structure is a good landmark to identify the cranial nerve. Third nerve always running medial side of this ligament and fourth nerve running lateral side of this ligament. 
and uh, six nerve running under the posterior petroclinoid ligament. So if we follow this ligament from posterior to anterior, like this, like this, we can detect the uh, cranial nerve step by step. So in such situation, I also choose the mini combined transpetrosal approach. I will show the surgical videos. This is a left a mini combined transpetrosal approach. At first, I expose the left Meckel cane. Uh, this is uh, the hip nerve, and this is a tumor in the Meckel cane. At first, I remove, and this is a, a petro a crinoid ligament in the tumor. So I follow this ligament structure to the anterior side and identify the uh, third nerve and the carotid artery. And then I peel off the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus from posterior to anterior. And then I identify the fourth nerve. This is a fourth nerve. Uh, anterior petrocrinoid ligament divides the third and fourth nerve. And I cut the, this ligament to mobilize the tumor downwards. After I cut this fibrous structure, uh, we can uh, pull the tumor downwards. And this is a, a third and fourth nerve. And this is the attachment of the tumor. I coagulate and cut. And then now tumor was devascularized and detached. So I carefully mobilize the tumor and identify the uh, seven and eighth nerve and remove the tumor around the uh, uh, fifth nerve. And this is the abducens nerve. I carefully remove the tumor piece by piece and expose the uh, ICA and uh, vertebral artery. This is a VA and VA union and vaginal artery. Uh, using this approach, I uh, could reject it out most part of the tumor very uh, care, uh, carefully. Uh, Post-op, uh, tumor was successfully uh, removed. But the problem is that if you choose a, a combined transpetrosal approach, detachment and devascularization around the here is very useful. But attachment around the medial side of the cavernous sinus and also a medial side of the uh, third and sixth nerve was very difficult. So the tumor left behind around the midline. But in such part, uh, we can uh, easily access through the uh, nostril using the endoscopic endonasal approach. So I perform the endoscopic endonasal approach uh, as a second operation. And I carefully drill out the seraflower. And this is a seraflower, and this is a pituitary gland. I mobilize the pituitary gland on the right side and expose the posterior uh, crinoid ligament. And I uh, drill out the uh, posterior uh, uh, crinoid process. Uh, this is a tumor. I start to remove the tumor around the medial cavernous sinus. And this is a pituitary stalk. And I dissect the tumor behind the pituitary stalk. This is a medial cavernous sinus. And this is a tumor under the optic nerve and optic tract. This is a C2. I carefully dissect and expose the C2. After resection of the tumor in the cavernous sinus, 
I identify the uh, Okromoza nerve and preserve the third nerve. And this is uh, the sixth nerve. I remove the tumor medial side of the sixth nerve by the transcriber approach. And I carefully reject it out. Now the almost all part of the tumor successfully rejected out. Postoperatively, the almost all tumor was rejected out. And in addition, uh, we can preserve her neurological function like this. Uh, this is another case of the tumor around the posterior crinoid and tentorium. Uh, I think that some doctors try to reject this tumor by the trans Shiruvian approach. Uh, this is a simulation image of the trans Shiruvian uh, approach, telonal approach. But this is a tumor and this is a ICA, this is a MCA. This vascular structure compressed from the posterior to anterior. So to access the tumor from the anterior side is not good. This is a simulation image of the mini combined transpetrosal approach. If we access this tumor from the posterior side, we can directly access the attachment of the tumor. So I choose the mini combined petrosal approach to this case. Our procedure is the same. At first, I perform the temporal craniotomy and expose the sigmoid sinus under the macroscopic fashion. And I uh, partially drill out the petrous bone. Uh, but sigmoid sinus already detracted the posterior side. So uh, bone work was very easy. I just drill out the along the petrous ridge. And then I move to the subdural space. Uh, this is a Meckel case. In all case, at first I open the Meckel case and start the tumor in the Meckel case. I carefully dissect the tumor. This is a medial tentorial edge. I cut the tentorium. This is a horse nerve. At first, tumor completely involves the SCA and truck horse nerve, but I can dissect the horse nerve from posterior to anterior. So I remove the tumor from posterior to anterior. This is a horse nerve. And this is a tumor in the posterior cavernous sinus. And this is a third nerve. I remove the tumor around the uh, third nerve and carefully dissect. And uh, third nerve decompress. And the most part of the tumor successfully dissected out. Postoperatively, uh, almost all tumor was rejected out. This is another case of the very large medial tentorial meningioma. Brainstem severely compressed. How to remove the tumor? I know that many doctors try to remove the tumor by the telonal approach or uh, Dorenz approach. But ICA compressed from posterior to anterior. So I choose the mini combined petrosal approach. So I uh, access this tumor from posterior to anterior. Uh, procedure was the same. At first, I just drill out the, along the petrous ridge and expose the SPA. Bone work finished at that time and then move to the subdural space. I ligate the SPS and cut the tentorium. 
This is a false n o Using this approach,、uh, always we can directly access the origin of the tumor and、uh, pull the tumor to the center of the tumor. So、uh, we can carefully dissect the tumor of the critical、uh, structure, PCA or brain stem, like this. I carefully remove the tumor. And then finally, all tumor was resected. Postoperatively, the, almost all tumor was successfully then compressed. And、uh, of course, patients just show the transient oculomotor nerve palsy after the surgery. But this symptom disappeared、uh, for six months. This is another case of the very large.、Uh, Lower petrochlorine meningioma. At first, I、uh, plan to remove the tumor by the trans p e t r o c e l l approach, but I carefully check the MRI. Origin of the tumor is the j a g u l a r tubercles. So I access the directly access to the j a g u l a r tubercles. So I choose the trans c o n d y l a with l e t t l e、uh, p r e s i g m o i d Infra labyrinthine approach. This is a sigmoid s i n u s I drill out the condyle and、uh, infra labyrinth part and access this angle. This is a light sigmoid s i n u s I already exposed. And、uh, this is a sigmoid s i n u s I drill out the bony structure along the j a g u l a r bulb. And then I、uh, cut the d r a m a t a、uh, to the、uh, hypoglossal nerve. And then this is the j a g u l a r tubercle. I carefully dissected out j a g u l a r tubercles. This is the lower cranial nerve, and this is the tumor. Uh, but in、uh, this case, bone work was very important. I d o r i l l out the bony structure、uh, around the j a g u l a r、uh, bulb and、uh, mobilize the sigmoid sinus to the lateral side. And I additionally d o r i l l out the、uh, bony structure around the j a g u l a r tubercles. And I start the、uh, tumor removal. This is a tumor along, around the lower cranial nerve, and this is a tumor. Around the、uh, facial and、uh, vestibular nerve. And always I pull the tumor to the center of the origin. This is a PCA and its branch, and this is a brain stem. This is a brain stem. I carefully mobilize the tumor. This is a, a ACE nerve and a facial nerve. I, I additionally d o r i l l out the、uh, internal auditory canal and、uh, coagulate the tumor.、Uh, tumor was very large, but our procedure and the concept was correct. So、uh, we can successfully dissect the tumor of the brain stem. Uh, finally, almost all tumor was resected out.、Uh, postoperatively, almost、uh, tumor was successfully resected out. Postoperatively, patients show the、uh, transient mild facial palsy, but fortunately, in this case, uh, uh, his facial function completely recovered to the normal state. This is a large vestibular s h o w a n o m a showing the gait disturbance. But unfortunately, p a t i e n t lost the hearing. So, our surgical plan is a total resection of the tumor with preservation of the facial nerve. When we、uh, resect the large vestibular s h o w a n o m a I always open the h o l a m e n magnum to Evacuate the、uh, CSF 
around the foramen magnum and put the uh, drainage tube around the epidural space and keep the uh, surgical field clean. And then I coagulate the uh, feeder and pull the, the tumor capsule to internal auditory canal. I will show our surgical video. At first, I open the uh, foramen magnum and put the some tube and then start the dural cutting. So now the CSF completely uh, evacuate and we can keep the surgical field very clean and bloodless. I prefer to use a park bench position, not sitting position, but our surgical field relatively bloodless and clean. So I coagulated the, the many uh, feeder and mobilized the capsule to the uh, internal auditory canal. Using this technique, I uh, always uh, expose the border between the tumor and the critical structure. Uh, in our procedure, uh, always we can keep the surgical field bloodless and mobilize the tumor to the internal auditory canal. This is a border between tumor and brain stem, like this. And I carefully coagulate the feeder. This is a brain stem. And I uh, open the internal auditory canal and remove the tumor in the canal. I uh, always uh, pull the tumor to the internal auditory canal and coagulate the feeder and dissect the capsule. This is a trigeminal now, and this is a brain stem. And then I reject the, the remnant of the tumor of the facial nerve under the monitoring. And now I can, I could totally reject it out all tumor. So using this technique, always our surgical field very clean. Uh, Postoperatively, all tumor was uh, rejected out and we can preserve the, uh, uh, his neurological function. This is uh, another case of the trigeminal schwannoma. The size is uh, very small. How to remove the, this trigeminal schwannoma? Uh, of course, I know the middle host approach very effective to remove the tumor, but if we choose the endoscope, we can uh, directly access just the keyhole approach. So in such situation, I select the, the keyhole approach. The size of the craniotomy is just three centimeter. And I perform the small craniotomy and open the dramatic. and cut to the dura like this. This is a middle horse. If uh, we choose the endoscope, we can directly observe the middle horse through the small keyhole. This is uh, the dura mater over the V3 nerve. I coagulate the dura mater over the uh, trigeminal nerve and cut to the dura mater. And uh, I coagulate that and cut to the dura mater and open the Meckel case. In case of the trigeminal schwannoma, uh, opening the Meckel cave is very important. This is a SPS. SPS just uh, lining over the Meckel case 
So I coagulated the SPS over the Meckel case. And this is a tentorial way. I uh, coagulate and cut the tentorium. And finally, I completely cut the tentorium. This is a normal, the fifth nerve, and this is a, the horse nerve. And this is a tumor in the Meckel case. Using this procedure, I uh, could directly access to the Meckel case. And this, I start the tumor uh, removal. This is the origin of the tumor. So after the compression of the tumor, we can carefully dissect the tumor of the neural structure. This is uh, the fifth nerve, and this is a Meckel case. Uh, craniotomy was small, but uh, in this case, endoscopic approach very useful to observe the uh, all part of the tumor. And I remove the tumor around the posterior fossa. I repeat the same procedure step by step and dissect the uh, tumor capsule. Uh, this is the final last, part, last piece of the tumor and remove out. This is a trigeminal nerve and this is a brain stem. I think that in case of the trigeminal schwannoma, this uh, keyhole endoscopic approach uh, is a very useful procedure to directly access the origin of the tumor. And now the old tumor was successfully dissected out. And this is a brain stem. Uh, Postoperatively, dural defect very small and craniotomy very small. So it's very easy to close the wound. I think this is a very effective, uh, less invasive procedure to directly access to the origin of the tumor. Postoperatively, all tumor was successfully dissected out. This is a, a last case. Uh, this is a recurrent chondrosal coma associated with uh, osteogenesis imperfect. This is a bone uh, disease. So a uh, patient shows a vaginal invagination and uh, the angle of the petrous ridge was very steep. So it's uh, very difficult to remove the tumor by the a transpetrosal approach. So I also choose the mini keyhole approach using the endoscope. Uh, this case, our procedure was the same. I insert the endoscope and observe the tentorial ridge. This is a horse nerve and this is a tumor and this is a hip nerve. I remove the tumor uh, within the space of the fourth nerve and the third nerve or fourth nerve and fifth nerve. This is a tumor. I dissect the tumor of the brainstem and remove the tumor piece by piece. Uh, this is a trigeminal nerve. I carefully dissect the tumor uh, of the medial side of the trigeminal nerve. And this is a brain stem. Uh, using the, this approach, craniotomy was small, but directly access the origin of the tumor. So I could carefully dissect out all tumor. Uh, Postoperatively, we can successfully dissect out so today uh, I, uh, I showed uh, a lot of case of the surg surgical strategy to scar waste tumor. But the basic 
rule is very simple. Optimal approach should be selected to accomplish these two steps. Access to the origin of the tumor and pull it back to the center of the tumor. This is a basic rule and very useful rule. Uh, thank you for attention. Uh, I think this is uh, our comment to the young neuroscientists. Thank you very much, Sensei. That was a really wonderful session. All the videos you showed were really awesome. The next level stuff. We are very thankful to you for coming here and showing all these wonderful videos. May I please invite our chair, Professor Azmi Ilyas, to say his expert comments. Hi, hello, uh, Professor Takio Gato. Very nice presentation. You have Thank shown you. Uh, a varieties of approach from mm -hmm. endoscopic to standard uh, temporal transpetrosal craniotomy. But I'm going to ask a very uh, basic yeah, question, basic because, question because, because hopefully we hopefully benefit, we benefit uh, young uh, neurosurgeon. So uh, for your standard temporal tran transpetrosal approach, how do you position the patient? So that is number one. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, combined, uh, when I operate by the combined transpetrosal approach, our position is a lateral uh, park bench position. And in case of the anterior transpetrosal approach, our position is super in lateral. Okay. Do you routinely use uh, intraoperative neurophysiological monitoring? Of course, yes. Okay. And for preoperative planning, uh, do you routinely do DSA for huge tumor? So cerebral it, angiography, do you do a cerebral angiography for all yeah, big yeah. tumor? Uh, in the skull based tumor, especially meningioma, yeah. uh, to estimate the feeder was very important. So. I use uh, uh, angiogram in all cases. And I ask the endovascular team to uh, embolize uh, some feeder. Do you embolize every tumors or only selected cases? So what are your Select, indication for pre -op? Selected, selected case. case. Especially and in case of the large petrochrybal meningioma. Embolization from the meningo hypophysial trunk uh, is very effective to keep the surgical field blood race and clean. And uh, when do you perform the DSA? Uh, few days before? Uh, usually we plan the angiogram and the embolization at the same time, just uh, three days before the surgery. Okay, very good. And you saw uh, one of the case that uh, very huge uh, petrochrybal meningioma that you would do combined approach uh, mm -hmm. temporal transpetrosal and subsequently endonasal to remove the residual. Uh, you do it in stage or uh, how long it, it, you, you, you do the second uh, procedure uh, from the endonasal? Usually the, uh, we wait the one month. Uh, it's just a medical insurance problem. A patient uh, go back to the home and uh, uh, we have to wait the two weeks so uh, usually uh, we wait one month. Uh, you have to wait for one month before you do the second procedure. Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay, one month. All right. And you also dem demonstrated uh, some uh, computer-based kind of models. Do mm. you use it as a pre-operative planning in all cases? Uh, probably well, it's good for beginners. Uh, yes. Uh, the, the purpose of the, this model was education. So if the, some young doctor have the interest of the operation, they make the simulation model before the surgery. So not all case. You remove, uh, when you drill the bone, uh, mm. you remove the pitrus and uh, how do you address the cavity at the end of surgery? Uh, usually uh, I put the fat tissue to seal the bony defect and cover the uh, temporal fascia uh, widely and uh, fix the uh, fibrin glue. This is our routine work. You have shown uh, most of the cases uh, completely uh, removed uh, with your elegant technique. But in your experience, do you have uh, any cases where you cannot remove uh, everything? And how do you manage the residual tumor? 
In case of the petrochival meningioma, uh, remove the lower part of the uh, cribal tumor. Lower petrochival meningioma, it's very difficult to remove. Yeah. In such situation, of course, we left behind some tumor. But usually the residual tumor along the lower cribus is uh, asymptomatic. So usually we uh, plan the weight and the scan. And if the residual tumor increase in size, we plan the gamma knife or uh, IMRT, staged radiation. 